you very much. Uh, can you hear me OK and uh, see slides OK? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, kind introductions and hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. And there has been a great, great conversations uh, so far in terms of locally, you know, how in the world of smart cities and sustainability, you know, various uh, initiatives taken by, you know, uh, local agencies, you know, and 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 public forums. Um, but why do we need to talk about cities and smart cities and the role it plays in achieving sustainable development? So I would like to take a slightly different angle to this conversation today and might go back to the first principles, you know, and 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 and, and try and try and take you through the journey. Um, but 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 just to take a step back and if we if we look around, you know, most of the economic growth globally is attributed to the cities. For instance, you know, it is estimated that you know around you know that, that, that the 600 or so largest cities around the world contributes more than 65% of the global GDP growth. Therefore, we need to think differently how we design, operate, and integrate cities around the world. And there have been tremendous, you know, a number of good initiatives uh, taken by many economies around the world, as well as, uh, you know, global uh, platforms such as UN in driving the conversation and initiatives on uh, sustainable development. But before we look at that, the number one, and I think it comes across really well uh, in this conference so far as well, that, that the climate change is, you know, is the code red warning for, for, for humanity as it stands. And the climate challenges and that increased greenhouse gas emissions are forcing us to think differently for energy generation, distribution, but not only that, transportation, water. We just heard about the electrifications and EVs and, and so forth, uh, waste management, water management, urban planning. How do we enable, you know, uh, one of the previous speakers talked about, you know, the lead and, you know, the buildings and assets. Um, so we must think differently how we consume finite amount of natural resources that we have and move away from that, you know, that take, make, dispose linear model and try and incorporate that more of a circular approach to, to save the planet, you know, to help people and, 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 and support their prosperity. Um, and and, and we have a great opportunity to tackle this world's you know, most pressing challenge by implementing smart systems, communities, smart communities, uh, smart cities. Number two, uh, also alluded by many of uh, the esteemed speakers previously, is, is these numbers are staggering. If we look at the, you know, the, the rapid rate of urbanization around the world, not just in the region, around the world, I mean, it's just staggering. 1.7 million per week, every week, added to the global urban population. I mean, that's massive. And that, that puts huge pressure on the city infrastructures. And, 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 and therefore, it requires enormous sort of thinking, you know, in terms of how do we cope with this, this uh, exponential, you know, demand and, and pressure on the city infrastructure. Uh, you know, water system, transportation, healthcare, education, and so forth, right? So that's number two in terms of why we need to look at being more smart in terms of getting more out of, you know, sort of, um, uh, you know, finite uh, amount of resources, you know, to tackle this growing demand on, on urbanization, to tackle the climate change. I think these are two of the, the biggest challenges that also come across, you know, uh, today's uh, conference, uh, as well as yesterday's, if you attended yesterday's. Um, but I would like to start with, you know, what is it that that we are we are talking here? You know, what is a sustainable development? And I'd like to go back in time, and this is a there is a there was a great piece of work done back in 80s, you know, led by UN and and their subcommittees, 
you know, in, in this space. And, and if you're interested, you know, have a look at this Our Common Future report published in 1987. So really great piece of work done back then, you know, uh, sort of leading initiatives on sustainable development. And it's a development that meets the needs of not just today, you know, and, and present generations, but also being mindful of the rights of the future generations to fulfill their needs. And how do we do that? And the world came together and led by the United Nations. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, that the, back in 2015, you know, the all, you know, member states of UN, you know, agreed and adopted this common framework, this common blueprint, this shared vision for peace and prosperity for people and planet now and into the future. And these goals, and, and, and many of these goals have been talked about already, you know, during during previous speeches also. These goals recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must go hand in hand um, with economic growth, all while tackling climate challenge and working to preserve our natural environment. Right? So, the smart cities, the sustainable development, what are the key goals? These are the 17 key goals where we are trying to, you know, drive efficiencies and improvement and achieve these common goals. It's a shared blueprint uh, for peace and prosperity, right? And, and it requires fundamental, you know, shift in thinking. I mean, since the adoption of the sustainable development goals, we all know that there have been many, many positive developments. You know, countries uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, local national level sort of forums and agencies started to incorporate sustainable development sort of initiatives, goals into national plans, strategies, and, and also, you know, sort of, uh, you know, frameworks. But there clearly needs, you know, much more needs to happen and, and quickly to bring about the transformative change. And this one report in particular, I mean, there are many, many great reports and, and you know, and publications, but this one in particular is one of my favorites in terms of, you know, what are those transformative levers and entry points for city leaders to think about and drive this change at a transformative rate, right? And, and, and we can see here that, you know, it's been recommended this framework by, 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 by UN and, and, and this report uh, on the top, what you have is these six key entry points for transformative, uh, you know, that sustainable development. And in doing so, you know, taking into account the urgency, the forward looking expectations, and, you know, about growing a global population uh, and, and, and seeking that well being and, 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 and so forth as well. So by, by, by doing that, uh, the, the key levers. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side, the governance, and it comes across really well in in other talks as well. We heard today that the governance at the city level, you know, at the national level in terms of the strategies, the policies, the framework, those government interventions, you know, the, 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 the city level interventions are extremely important in terms of driving this transformative change, extremely important in terms of making sure that, you know, we take people on the journey. But also technology plays a key role in terms of driving this as well, in terms of um, uh, you know making the change, and 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 this is where I think you know the smart cities concept and you know the smart systems and collecting data and enabling city infrastructure with you know digitally enabling the infrastructure you know with the digital technologies and 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 data centric and 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 citizen centric approach to make sure that that it improves the sustainability and resilience you know we talked a, a lot about resilience as well you know previous talks you know improving the resilience of cities as well to make sure that you know we are we are prepared to absorb shocks um in the future we are proactive in enabling citizens in 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 dealing with shocks and 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 challenging situations i think data and smart systems and 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 and, and and then and, and digital uh, is going to be key uh, in, in this space. Um, 
this this one is another one, you know, one of the, I mean, there are many, many case studies around the world. You know, there is the Smart Cities Index, Global Index, uh, you know, published annually as well with all cities, you know, uh, profiles and, and case studies as well. But this one in particular brings some of those basic sort of points to, you know, drives home in terms of when we talk about smart cities, you know, enabling city infrastructure in terms of collecting data, you know, in terms of using data to make informed decisions and how it can help in terms of not only saving lives, but also reducing crime. Uh, we have all experienced in the last two, two and a half years, you know, what happened during COVID and we all got those, you know, those, those apps and, you know, on mobile devices and, you know, those uh, COVID apps and, you know, in terms of, you know, tackling global pandemic like COVID and how instrumental it was in terms of, using smart devices, um, sensor technologies, and the city infrastructure to tackle the global pandemic. We experienced that life. So, so I think using smart cities and, 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 and technologies and framework could help us uh, tackle some of these uh, pressing challenges that, 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 that we face. When we talk about smart cities, and I'm going to take, you know, I'm slightly biased towards the standards as well, because there are globally recognized, you know, how to guides. Uh, if you're wondering, OK, if all is good about smart cities, then how do I make a start? One might ask. And there are many, you know, uh, frameworks and, and good practices. Some of the frameworks that I'm, you know, being a standards institution, you know, I'm going to share with you. And the first one is the ISO um, 37106 framework that, that provides a very simple, basic, you know, uh, sort of key principles about smart city and enabling smart city strategies and framework. Um, the city has to be a visionary city in terms of, um, you know, providing that clarity about the social, economic and environmental outcomes that they, they want to achieve by integrating, you know, the UN sustainable development goals, but also, you know, the, the digital framework and the smart city framework around it. Uh, the city needs to provide that strong leadership and commitment, uh, commitment uh, as well in terms of driving uh, that that trans transformation that is needed, in terms of driving that collaboration as well, uh, in terms of drawing on the strength of all city planners and communities and citizens as well. So I think you know when we talk about smart city, it's about a visionary city setting clear goals and objectives and and supporting. Uh, citizens and local agencies in driving that. The next point I'd like to make is, is it needs to be a truly, truly, you know, citizen centric approach. It cannot be, um, you know, we may have seen, you know, uh, sometimes in especially early days, you know, it starts with technology, let's be smart, but why? And what are the objectives and outcomes that we're trying to achieve for our citizens, you know? And I think that citizen centric approach is extremely important in terms of driving the whole smart city conversations and adoption of a, you know, a common framework, enabling citizens and local businesses to create value, you know, public value for themselves as well as uh, for, for the city and nation is extremely important as well. Um, we already heard about, um, you know, in previous conversations as well, you know, and, and, and when we think about smart cities, you know, we know that we need to overlay, um, uh, you know, a, a technology layer on top of cities infrastructure um, because the smart cities add the digital intelligence to existing sort of infrastructure, making it possible to do more with less. And again, you know, as I said, you know, we experienced that previously in the last uh, couple of uh, sort of years, you know, when we were dealing with pandemic and it was so efficient for our, the economies around the world and citizens to actually, uh, you know, deal with that pandemic in, a, in, a, in, a, in an efficient way, right? So digital uh, infrastructure is going to be extremely, extremely important in terms of how we gather data, how we make sense of that data and how we connect citizens and authorities and the decisions make, decision makers uh, with the data to save time, reduce waste, and help boost social connectedness as well. Um, and then the last but not the least, it's it's about an open and collaborative city. It has to foster the resilience, but at the same time, be a lot more collaborative instead of the traditional city model where it's a lot more siloed, 
you know, and 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 hard for citizens to access data. I mean, we have seen that it is improving and has already improved in many cities around the world that, you know, now at the fingertip of our, you know, mobile device, you know, our, you know, we can access um, most of, uh, you know, the public services, you know, through through the digital technologies as well. And it is improving, but we need to continue and do more of that being more open, transparent with data and a lot more collaborative in driving uh, in driving uh, the vision for smart cities. And um, I thought I just list, uh, uh, you know, some of the key standards that enable sustainable development in smart cities. And and these are the key standards. You, you know, I would highly recommend uh, to have a look. They are they are really great how to guides in terms of if you look if you are looking at the, you know designing a new city or or or, or um, you know implementing some initiatives in existing cities and you're looking for how to guide the strategically process point of view or performance and KPIs point of view. These are the you know some of the key uh, sort of indicators that I would. Um, you know, sort sort of standards that I would highly recommend. You know, ISO 37101 and 106 in particular, but also indicators for city services and quality of life and so forth as well. You know, these are really uh, good starting points for you uh, to 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 refer uh, when you are talking about smart cities and sustainable development. And these are global uh, sort of how to guides uh, to use them. If I take it uh, one step further and according to those global you know, standards, in particular ISO 37106, I think, I think we need to shift and we are shifting slowly uh, you know, towards you know, from this uh, siloed you know, data model and you know, departments you know, working in silo to more of an integrated sort of approach, a twin track approach um, in terms of transforming that operating model for city, uh, for it to be a smart city. It has to be a client, you know, citizen centric, but also there is that connectedness between digital and physical infrastructure as well in terms of supporting that externally driven innovation. So that opening up, uh, you know, the data for public and, and businesses to also support, um, you know, innovation externally driven and also support that internally driven innovation, um, city led and departments led innovation as well. Again, these are coming from you know these great how to guides, uh, ISO guides that I mentioned in my previous slide. I think they are a really great source of uh, <clears throat> information in terms of if you're looking at how to information. And just to conclude my just to conclude my you know uh, presentation, I thought I just um, you know end with some some of the good uh, you know resources in my opinion that that you can start looking at you know uh, from bsi perspective um, and we have a wealth of knowledge where we can also help you in terms of implementing this how to guide so feel free to contact our local offices but also there are some great publications and initiatives by un a world economic forum in this space as well so a ton of resources already in this space to support you and your businesses and city leaders in terms of driving smart cities. Excuse me. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your patience. And yeah, feel free to here is my contact details. You know, uh, feel free to also drop me an email if there is anything I can help you with as well. Um, thank you very much uh, for your patience.